Good morning. In this video lesson, we're going to continue to work on solving equations. Our big focus is going to be, again, applying the distributive property, or how do we work with equations that are in factored form. They're just going to get a little bit more complicated today. Thank you for making it today in the cold. It's got to be the coldest day of the year. Um, so thank you for showing up. Thank you for working hard today. Um, let's take a look at how we work with the distributive property. So as you should remember now from yesterday, if you were with us, factored form and expanded form. Factored form is just when we take two or more terms, in this case, 2x and negative 4, and we factor out a common multiple. In this case, 3 has been factored out of the variable term 2x and the constant term negative 4. So we could distribute that 3 back out. 3 times 2x gives us 6x for the variable term. 3 times negative 4 gives us negative 12 for the constant term. And this skill of going from factored form to expanded form will be key today. A quick reminder that like terms, a whole key with solving these equations is to get like terms together, things with the same last name. When solving equations, the whole goal is to get the variable terms to one side, the constant terms, the regular numbers, to the other side of the equation. So first problem today, a bit more complicated, but we're ready for that. Negative 3 times 4 minus 2a, two terms in factored form here, plus a equals negative 33. When you pause this video, you're going to go through part one and part two. Part one says the equation is written in factored form. When trying to find a solution, what would be a good first step for any of these factored form equations? And then for part two, you're going to try to solve this equation out on your own. I'm switching over to my whiteboard. You should be pausing the video. And when you come back from pausing the video, we're going to talk through. All right, let's think about part one first. Part one says if they're in factored form, when we're trying to solve equations or find solutions for factored form equations, what's a good first step to take? And we should recognize the distributive property, what we started applying yesterday, a skill we learned in seventh grade with Mr. Neville and Ms. Ogagba. If we start using the distributive property, that can help us get rid of parentheses and solve an equation. So talk about applying the distributive property here for part one. And for part two, I'm going to full screen the whiteboard as we talk about solving it. The first thing worth pointing out, when we see factored form, it's because two of these terms are not like terms. They can't be combined. So we just can't combine them, but we find a common factor that got pulled out of them. In this case, 4 in red here is a constant term. Negative 2a in blue is a variable term. They don't have the same last name. They're not like terms. We can't combine them. But both of them have had a negative 3 as a factor divided out or pulled out. My first job, if I'm going to try to solve an equation like this, is to distribute the negative 3 back into both of these terms. And by doing that, we'll get rid of the parentheses, and that can help us start getting the a terms combined and the constant terms combined. Negative 3 times positive 4, and negative times a positive gives us negative 12. And now this negative 3 is distributed back to a negative 2a. A negative times a negative makes a positive term. 3 times 2 gives us 6, so negative 3 times negative 2a makes positive 6a. The rest of the equation we're just going to bring down. Now that the parentheses have been eliminated, now that we've gone to expanded form, we can start to identify the number of terms. There's four of them. And I see two of them are variable terms. We go with red circles for constants. And two of them are constant terms. The key, drawing this line through the equation, what I call it the river, helps me recognize that even though the constant terms are on different sides of the equation and will have to be gathered, the variable terms have already been gathered. Anytime like terms have been gathered to the same side of the equation already, we should simplify immediately. We should add those up. 6a plus 7a, 6a plus 1a gives us 7a's. And we're going to reset the rest of the equation now. Every time I perform a step, whether it's simplifying, distributing, inverse operations, I want to reset my whole equation so I can understand where to go next. Now we have two constant terms, and because the variable terms have been gathered on the left side of the equation, it makes sense to put all the constant terms to the right side. I use the inverse of positive 12 to get rid of the negative 12. Anything I do to one side of my equation to change it or transform it, I need to do the same exact thing to the other side to keep the equation true. 7a comes down equals, 
negative 33 plus 12. A lot of ways to do this. My brain sees a positive term combined with a negative, so I'm going to do subtraction. 33 minus 12 leaves me with 21. But in this case, the negative 33 has a greater absolute value than the positive 12, so I'm going to have negative 21 units left over after I add 12. 7a equals negative 21. I would solve that by inspection. You could divide both sides by 7, though. And dividing both sides by 7 helps us see here that a has to equal negative 3. If I want to know if a definitely equals negative 3, we should recognize every time we're asked to confirm solutions. I don't have the time to do it right now, but you on your own are going to take the negative 3, plug it in for both of the a's in this equation, and see if it really creates a true statement. See if it is the solution. That's what part three gets into. Explain how you can confirm whether your solution, A equals negative three, is correct. So on a different whiteboard, you're going to have to plug in a negative three for A and check my work, check your work, see if it really works. At this point, I think most of us should be leaving the guided problems, leaving the video lesson, and get started on the practice problems. You're in good shape to start doing some of these difficult problems like number one, number two, number three. But when you get to problem four and problem five, I'm going to give you one more difficult equation here, the optional challenge problem to take a look at. So again, I would start the practice problems for most students, but if you want to see the more challenging guided problem, it kind of shows up at the end of today. The equation's a bit more difficult like this. I'm going to go ahead and show this. If you're going to the challenge problem, you should have paused this video. You should have tried to do this challenge problem on your own. In the interest of time, I'm going to talk through this pretty quickly. We know we need to distribute. The challenge here, now instead of integers, we have decimals or fractions that have been factored out. But still, we're going to multiply those decimals or those fractions back in. We just need to remember our rules for multiplying with decimals or with fractions. 0 0.5 I would treat as a fraction. I really think 0 0.5 is just the fraction 1 half. And the key with timesing with fractions, if you take an integer or a whole number and you times it with a fraction, you just multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. That means timesing by one half, timesing by one won't change anything. Timesing by one half just means divide by two. Timesing by one third means times by one, nothing changes. Divide by three, all this means is divide these terms by three. Half of 4b, or 4b divided by two, gives us 2b. Half of negative six gives us negative three. I bring the negative 3b down, I bring the equal sign down, 1 third of 21, or 21 divided by 3 gives us 7, and 1 third of negative 9, or negative 9 divided by 3 gives us negative 3, so that becomes negative 3b. At this point, hopefully your brain is recognizing there are three variable terms, those are in blue boxes, there are two constant terms, I put those in red circles. If I've got three variable terms and two sides of the equation, some of them must be gathered. In this case, the 2b and the negative 3b are on the same side. 2 minus 3 gives us negative b. The negative 3 is still there. That comes down. Then 7 minus 3b comes down. And now we see two variable terms instead of 3. Simplified the equation. And the two constants are also on opposite sides. We need to use inverses. I like positive numbers, so I'm going to add 3 here instead of subtracting 7. That's going to get my constant terms eliminated from the left side of the equation, the left expression. They're all over on the right. At the same time, to save room on the whiteboard, since I decided to get the constants to the left, to the right, the variable terms are going to leave the right, go to the left. I get 2b equals 7 plus 3 is 10. Last step, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. b is equal to 5. Then we would plug that back into the equation to see if it works. <laughs> Running through that pretty quickly. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 6 gives us 14. Half of 14 gives us 7. So we're going to get 7 minus 15 over there. 5 times 9 gives us 45. 21 minus 45 gives us 24. Negative. One third of 24 that's negative is negative 8. 7 minus 15 is negative 8. I really wasn't sure if I was correct here, so that's why you see me quickly plugging in and checking the answer. I think I'm pretty sure b equals 5, but you're going to have to double check 